Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. And setup's a little bit different today, but we're gonna do a try a chapter challenge tag. I don't know what you call this, but hey, I'm gonna be trying a chapter from several different books. I guess I'll probably read like, I don't know how my, most people do this, but if there's a prologue, I'd read the prologue in chapter one or just chapter one from this little book stack I've got. I've been feeling, and a lot of my friends too have said this, what are we gonna film? <laughs> like, just kind of feeling slumpy with the YouTube filming and, you know, just kind of bored. So, um, I've seen several people do this and I'm kind of feeling a little slumpy with all the cozies in the middle grade this month. I've read so many different ones. I've enjoyed the books, but I had to switch it up, you know, with a Christian romance and that was nice. And now I just kind of want to have an another book that is different than cozy mystery and middle grade okay so here's my stack here so i've got some library books in here too so i've already renewed them like three times now and they're gonna be due back in a couple weeks <laughs> so i need to at least pick one of these um and first one i have here is i know i got my pumpkins on ignore me but it's a comfy shirt. So, uh, first book I've got here is the Spring Brides. This is uh, Rachel Hawk, Lenora Worth, and Meg Mosley. These are three no novellas inside of this. And I already told y'all I had read Winter Brides and I really enjoyed those. I just kind of want to read the Rachel Hawk in this for now. If I get to the other ones later, that's great. But the time I have for this, I don't have time to read all three of them. So, Rachel Hawk is an author. I have several of her books on my shelf. I've never read her. So, I know she writes like wedding series and, you know, uh, prince, princess novellas. I don't know what she writes. <laughs> what am I saying? She writes wedding books. How about that? And I think she's got the wedding dress. I don't know. But I have several of her books on my, on my shelf. And I think I want to try to see if I like this. So, so the next book I have in my stack here is Five Days in the Sky by Carla Loriano. This is a Christian contemporary romance and it's one that Amy at Pretty Little Hipperbacks really enjoyed. And I did talk about this in my five star prediction video. So I already read the synopsis for it, so I'm not gonna get into too much into it, but this um, is a Scottish Christian romance and I'm here for it. So I definitely wanna read the first chapter in it. And then The Painter's Daughter, this was also in that video for five star predictions by Julie Classen. And I already read the synopsis and everything, but. Uh, we got some crazy stuff going on in this, it sounds like. <laughs> then I've got this library book. I didn't know if I was even going to read this. I almost returned it, but didn't go back to the library. I did read the first book in the Derricotte Tales, but this one is Castle of Refuge. And I can't remember what the first one was. I just didn't love it. I don't know what it was. It was the first Court of Swans. So I read it. I listened to it. And I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there was, I think, a character I just didn't love, like all the stuff going on with him. I can't remember his name. It was literally sometime at the beginning of last year or maybe even 2021 at this point. I couldn't tell you, but I'm gonna try. We'll try. Uh, so I don't even know what that's about, but we're gonna go on. And then Cold Light of Day by Elizabeth Goddard. Uh, this is one, a recent release. I've never read anything by her. So yeah, we'll just see how that goes. So all of these, I'm gonna sit here we're gonna read the first chapter. I'm probably gonna give you my thoughts after I read each chapter of each one. Something kind of fun. And then I'm gonna choose which one at the end I want to pick up. So let's go. So the first one I'm gonna read is Cold Light of Day, Elizabeth Goddard, and I'll check it back in. Okay, first off, this prologue. <laughs> In cold light of day has done got me. This is gonna be a bad idea because I'm gonna want to read all these. Uh, we had some intense stuff going on. Kenny. Okay, so the prologue is has another character. I don't think it's the main character, and it's in Southeast Alaska during um, the month of May. And this guy, Kenny, he's pretty much lost in Alaska. It looks like he's from Michigan. And it's a bad snowstorm and stuff. And he witnesses a murder. A guy in a black ski mask kills this woman in a bright pink parka. He's standing over her and shoots her point blank in the head. 
this ain't good. And he sees it. And so he's running away and the killer's running after him. And at the end of the prologue, it's talking about, was it an avalanche? Y'all. What is it? Before he could react, the, gr the ground rumbled and shook and the snow shifted under his feet. He glanced up at the peak above. Uh-oh. I'm going to tell y'all right now. Elizabeth, what you doing? <laughs> okay. Um, this is actually all about Police Chief Autumn Long. She's fighting to keep her job in the quiet Alaska town of Shadow Gap. Unexpected string of criminal activity leaves her with a wounded officer, unexplained murders, and an attack on her father. And there's a guy, uh, Greer Brenner, who comes into town and seems to have skills and training that Autumn needs to help her face the threat. So, that's how the whole prologue was in this, So Action-packed prologue. This is a romantic suspense, Christian romantic suspense. Uh, Elizabeth, honey. I don't know if I want to get into chapter one yet, because I'll be wanting to read this. Actually, it's only a few, if, it's only four pages. I'll be back. Okay, we'll, we'll do this. We'll, we'll do this. We'll see. Let's see. We're doing this kind of like vlog style. Okay, so the first chapter is introducing Autumn, our main character. It looks like chapter two is from the guy's point of view, Greer. Y'all. So, she's talking about in this first chapter all about how um, they're needing some help, you know, in, in their police force. Is the police force that she said? Yeah, because she's a police chief. Duh. Just talking about the town and how small it is. And everything going on and then um, Greer comes in somebody is out there floating in the water it looks like what hands are out there and they're trying to save somebody and Greer the guy Greer he's out there so uh, it's just setting up the scene for the area but that first prologue got me what I need to know all right so this is a strong contender my friends and I don't even know <laughs> I didn't see her pick up a fucking read. Um, what have I done? Castle of Refuge. Melanie Dickerson. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Okay. Let, let's do this. Look here. We got two sisters in this first chapter. I am dead. Honey, this is set in, like, really olden times. Um, spring 1378, Ingleford Castle, Hampshire. So, I've got two sisters, Audrey and Morris Maris. I need to go back and probably, if I read this, I really need to, like, recap book one. Because I remember this guy's name, and I'm like, I can't remember anything about this first book. But... This is so sad. <laughs> the first chapter is like the girl's 15 and her dad's like basically wanting to marry her marry her off. And Maris is kind of like the, the outspoken wild one a little bit. And her dad says, ah, she didn't have to get married. We'll just always have a home for her or whatever. And they're wanting to marry off the younger sister, okay? Is she younger? I think she is, yeah. Um, and so by the end of this, like, I guess... Um, she overhears, her, the sister overhears her dad, their dad talking to Audrey, the younger sister who he's wanting to marry off. And he's going to write to the Lord Derricott, Edwin, to try to see, you know, a proposal for them to get married or whatever. Audrey, at the end of the first chapter, trips her sister in her, in her face, like she's jealous of her sister or something, trips her. And her face goes into the fire, and she has scars from it. Sounds like she's going to have scars. It says it's an ugly duckling retelling. So, four years, and then the next chapter says four years later. Ooh. Man, this is going to be tough. Because that, I like, like, the medieval time. I, I really do. That's one of my favorites. Uh... <laughs> Melanie Dickerson, you can get me on this. Um, yeah, okay, what am I doing next? All right, so 
Should I just pick between them? <laughs> Let's keep going. Julie Klassen, the painter's daughter. All right, I already read the synopsis for this before, but how many pages is chapter one? Okay, about 18. I will be back. Okay, so the first chapter is really just setting the scene and everything for what we read on the synopsis, right? Sophie, she assists her father in his studio, and so uh, Wesley, he is an artist. <laughs> he has painted her and stuff before, and so his brother, Stephen, comes in, and he pretty much has to take on all his responsibilities all the time, and pretty much Wesley, he gone, and so, yeah, they're setting the scene up for Stephen to pretty much take his responsibilities over Wesley's, because Wesley has pretty much left for Italy, and left his host daughter in serious trouble, so, yeah, <laughs> he's gonna have to, like, save her reputation, and be with her, it sounds like, <laughs> like she's really, like, infatuated with Wesley, because, but then you got the brother. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this sounds like it'll be good too. I don't know that it's in my top like right now. Okay. When I get to it, y'all. When I get to it, I'll tell you. All right. Let's 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 read Five Days in Sky. First chapter in it. This is kind of fun. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock at night, y'all, on Saturday. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, that's the only time I could probably do this. So, um... Let's see. Right now, I'm sitting at Elizabeth Goddard's and Melanie Dickerson's book. Okay. I mean, they're my top two right now. So, let's do Five Days in the Sky. You gonna get it? Let's see. Um, but yeah. All right, let's okay. Okay. Uh, Amy, girl, I see why you like this. So, the banter. <laughs> like, not really banter, but the, the them, like, there's gonna be banter. Okay. We're here. So, this is all about this girl, Andrea. And so, she's got a, a consultant job, but she has this new assignment, okay? And she has to snag this high-profile client in Scotland, and it's this guy, James McDonald, who is this, um, this like, really famous guy. This really famous chef, okay? Has his own show and everything. Everybody knows him except her. And so, she don't know nothing about him. And so, she said, place and I've died laughing because she's talking and honey she didn't know it's him and so they are not off to a good start okay um yeah so she's just got to spend the next three days trying to get James McDonald's signature on a contract while keeping things strictly professional the fact he'd already turned her into a blithering idiot once didn't bode her bode well for her quick thinking but she'd manage. She had to. She hadn't come this close to achieving her goals. Just let a, let a man get in her way. This sounds, and it looks like we've got his perspective, chapter two. This sounds like it's going to be good. Okay. All right. The last one. Okay. The little novella. Let me see. Uh, Rachel Hawk's novella. Uh, looks like there's a pr prologue. A couple pages. And then... We've got several pages here. Let me just read this and I'll be back. Okay, so intrigued. Got some royalty in this, kind of like I said at the beginning. If you'd like a royal wedding, probably like the intro to A March Bride by Rachel Hawk. Because Susanna, she's supposed to be marrying this king, King Nathaniel II of Brighton, Brighton Kingdom. And then, I better mute this. I can copyright. Uh, the, go <laughs> the government insists that she has to renounce her American citizenship. That's not even in the first chapter yet. So, we're just kind of setting up everything. And she, there's like some miscommunication kind of going on a little bit. Or maybe not, re maybe not really miscommunication, but more of like questioning and internal questions. Like misunderstandings inside. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Um, I don't think I'm going to read this right now. Uh, I think I will at some point before I have to return it. Ooh, okay. So, that's everything. Which one do I pick? Um, it's really between, I mean, I want to read all these, right? But, like, right now. The Castle of Refuge, which is a surprise. 
because y'all, I need to know what happens. Her sister, I'm about to get her. And then this, I don't know, oh my gosh. Okay, for this video, <laughs> I'm gonna ask Siri to flip a coin and I'll be back. <laughs> That's the only way. Heads, it's Castle of Refuge. Tails, it's Cold Light of Day. We'll see. All right, I had to stop the video so I could do the flip, but she said heads, Castle of Refuge it is. If you didn't know, you can ask Siri to flip a coin and she'll tell you. Um, all right, we're gonna do it. And I'm gonna recap a little bit on the first book, I think, because uh, I can't remember a lot of it. So I'll do that. And then, yeah, today's Saturday, so I'll update tomorrow. We're gonna consider this kind of like a tri-chapter vlog. How about that? Uh, I am reading, here, I got this book sitting here. Hold on. <laughs> I have a little setup here on these books and everything. But right now, I'm reading The Cracked Spine by Paige Shelton. Um, so I may try to finish it first before I update on this other book, okay? I'm enjoying this, though. Really good. I'll tell y'all about it later. But anyway, so yeah, that was fun. I'm gonna edit this, but I need to go to bed, honestly. So I'm probably not gonna get more reading done tonight. But um, I love y'all and I'll update y'all when I get started. Back on this, how fun. Hey y'all, just coming in on my way home from work. I wanted to give an update on reading Castle of Refuge by Melanie Dickerson. I got to chapter five or six. So I'm like 20% in, I think. It's not a very long book, but I'm really enjoying this. So I look back at my review and I've remembered I don't know what I was remembering, but <laughs> I didn't love the first book. What was it called? Ooh, I can't remember. I put a picture of it here. Mm, your girl can't remember. Oh, <laughs> sorry. But uh, I didn't love the first book, but it was, I think it was the Sir Elliot character that just really bothered me that I, I can't, okay? And so I give it three and a half stars. So I overall like the premise of the story. I, rem I remembered after reading my review, okay? Cause you know, you can't remember without rereading my notes, honey. And yeah, it, it was fine, you know? So yeah, that was the first Melanie Dickerson and only Melanie Dickerson I've ever read. So I definitely wanna give her more of a chance because so many people love her. It shows all these fairy tale retellings that I'm really interested in and just really popular series and all the things. So this uh, Dare Cocktails, is like five or six books, I think. And so, yeah, I already have this second book apparently on my Kindle. As <laughs> usual, who, who knows? And so, uh, anyway, I, the whole point of this update, I, I'm looping here, is I got to chapter five or six of this book and I am really enjoying it. The whole, the whole idea of this girl, like her and her sister, let me tell you right now, Audrey and her sister Maris, like I said earlier, in, in when I was reading the first chapter, it was like, she knocks her, she like wants to hurt her sister so bad. She's so jealous of her sister. Maris is so jealous of Audrey. And it's like, I don't get it. <laughs> What's the deal, girl? She's like crazy. And so she, I guess you gotta have that kind of antagonistic character, right? And so she is just constantly berating her sister and making fun of her, Audrey, and our main, our main girl here. And she's just so jealous. and. When it's funny because like Maris is told to be the beautiful one, right? And it's like, okay, you're supposed to be the pretty one, honey, but you cried to you. So your daddy said you ain't never get married, nobody. He can't let you go nowhere because you nuts. <laughs> so that must be the reason she's jelly, okay? And so, yeah, you like how I'm explaining this. I mean, what am I saying? But um, yeah, so the whole first chapter, by the end of the first chapter, you see that she has purposefully kicked, like tripped her sister to fall into the fire. She's got scars on her face and the girl just feels so ruined from this accident, which it really wasn't an accident, is on purpose. Look here, Maris. I'm gonna get you, honey. Then we see four years later in chapter two, Audrey, you know, she her plans to get married to this Lord Derricot, whatever his name was, I think. Edwin, what was his name? <laughs> I can't even remember his name. The main guy in this, okay? Um, that's been gone. So all this stuff went down where now her dad's want her to get married to some Right, like some man who means nothing, he's older, and she feels less than because he's not even like a, I don't think he's royalty status or anything, he's not even like up there, okay? I'm explaining this really bad, but anyway, 
we here. And so she basically does not want to get married to this man. Well, Maris ends up coming back because she was like telling her daddy, look here, you gonna have to get Maris out of here. She gonna kill me. And so she gone for a while. Well, she back and by chapter three or four or five, Audrey, she gone. This is not spoiler, but it's like the whole introduction of the book. She gone and she flees and acts like she gonna leave. <laughs> she gonna leave to see her aunt and uncle. And she's like just on her own in the wilderness kinda. And next thing you know, she ends up passing out where da 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 nonchalantly, <laughs> of course, right? In typical fashion of a book, right? I love this. She ends up passing out real sick, coughing and all this stuff, having a fever around, um, is his name Edwin? I think it's like Edwin. <laughs> his house, <laughs> his castle, Lord Derek Hunt's castle, okay? And he, I remember now because, and I can't say, I can't say about him. There's something about him I'm not going to say because I feel like that spoils part of what happened in the first book, but something terrible happened to him too. And so he's, I can't say, but in my mind, I don't want to say, but something's happened to him too, where he's changed since he first met Audrey, okay? And it's like, he don't recognize her and any of this stuff because her scars and he, it's been so long that it was like a one-time dinner thing when they first met, this whole thing. I am not making sense, I'm sorry. But <laughs> yeah, so I'm at this part in this book where she is at his house and he don't really know who she is and we're gonna see what happens, okay? So I cannot wait. She's trying to hide out from her daddy and her sister so she don't have to marry this man. Look here, Audrey, let's go. And I think I really like this because I can kind of relate to how she feels because if y'all notice, I got a scar right here. If you never noticed before, I'm sure you have. Everybody probably noticed it, but it's in, my, in with my smile, okay? And I can kind of relate to how she feels by having a scar on your face, you know, these scars. And the way this happened when I was younger was when I was in fourth grade. Was it fourth grade? Yeah, fourth grade. I was trying to screw in this light bulb or something. Like, my dad was always in construction, honey. I don't know. He had this light bulb. Sorry, the phone moved. But he had this light bulb situation all messed up, okay? Out of the socket, everything hanging down. Your girl gets up there. Well, my granny had just passed away during this time, and it's my mom's mom. And so there was stuff everywhere in the house. I'm climbing up. I fall off the cushion, and I end up, like, scratching my face right here. Had to have 12 stitches, honey. There's the back story to the scar on the face, <laughs> okay? And... You know, I was really traumatized by that when I was younger. I remember in my fourth grade picture, I just like cut it up. I just was so, just hated it so bad. And now, I just realized I don't think I really fully explained what I was trying to say about how I got this scar on my face. My bad. But I was saying that I fell off the couch trying to screw in a light bulb, basically, and hit the bottom of a chair that didn't have the protection piece on it because we had stuff everywhere from when my granny had passed away. And so when I hit that, it cut my face. Really lucky it didn't poke my eye out. All the things there. I had to the hospital. It was a whole ordeal, honey. I'll never forget it. Looking in the mirror and seeing all that. I'll tell you right now, it was kind of traumatic. It really was. Kids were mean. They picked on me and everything. I couldn't deal with it. They called me Scarface. That was my trauma as a kid, okay? But you know what now? Your girl embraces it. I am a child of the Lord, and it don't matter what, what scars you got on your face, honey. It don't even matter, honey. You know, the Lord loves us as we are, and that's all that matters, honey. Anyway, back to what I was saying. <laughs> It's like, this is who I am. I don't care anything about it. People say they don't notice it. I don't even notice it anymore myself. It's in a great place. I'm lucky I didn't lose my eye, honey. But um, if you can't see, you can kind of see right there, right? So I'm very lucky to what happened, okay? I'm very, very blessed, I'll say, more than anything. We ain't lucky, we blessed, honey. And so I can relate to her on some of these things. And I think that's why I'm connected with the story so much because she's trying to like hide her scars with her hair and stuff. And, honey, I embrace every, every little blemish, honey. That's probably why I never had plastic surgery or any kind of Botox. I don't, I, I can't. Like, I just feel, I mean, I don't say never, but I really don't, I can't stand needles anyway. But, like, I just, I am who I am kind of thing. And, um, yeah. And so, I don't know if that's why I'm loving her so much. I, maybe. Maybe. But, yeah, now y'all got the little backstory, all the things. This video's going to be long. It's like seven minutes already if I don't cut out my rambling. Uh, drop the phone again. Anyway, uh, I'd love to finish it tonight or tomorrow. Probably not tonight. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'll give you some final thoughts, but I just love this whole story of this girl was supposed to marry this guy. Things happened of them not being together and it changed them both forever. She's like, Daddy, I'm gone. She flees and then they end up meeting back up again. That is what I love. I love 
that kind of story. I know it sounds predictable, but it's what I need right now after reading all this middle grade and um, what else? Mystery was <laughs> word. So yeah, this is the book I'm needing right now and I'm really enjoying it. So uh, anyway, uh, so, oh, Court of Swans. That's what book one is called. <laughs> I just remembered. My bad. Okay. I'm looping at this point. So, I hope y'all are having a good day. Today's Monday. First day back after our vacation. I was, like, tired. My stomach was upset this morning. Your girl was struggling. But I'm here. I'm going to go home, make some breakfast for dinner, all the things. But I did want to go ahead and do a quick update. Because if your girl don't do an update right now, I ain't going to do one. And so, I hope this made sense with this book. I ain't going to spoil nothing, like I said. But that's really how this whole introduction's taken off. And I'm loving it. So, Anyway, I'll catch you with y'all later. Bye, y'all. Hey, y'all. So, we out here. Getting that walking in. Hey, I don't even know if y'all can hear me good. <laughs> what am I doing? But uh, I'm 70% in, currently listening to the audio of Castle of Refuge, and I am, oh, there's so much stuff happening. Maris is here, girl. I'm about to get you. We're going to throw hands. I, I cannot say this, girl. <laughs> She's going to have to just, like, move on, honey. And then we got... Edwin, things are happening. I remember this name, but I was right. It was Edwin. Oh, I was confused earlier. And action. People are like having to run and get away from other people. Honey, the things. <laughs> this is crazy. I think this might be a five star read. Like, I know it's not a groundbreaking, like, perfect read, but, like, this is the book I need at the time. I relate to her in many ways, like I told y'all earlier. And. All the things, all the things. I just, I'm loving it. 70%. I really want to finish this tonight. Don't know if I can, but what a surprise. Y'all, if you have a channel, do the try chapter stuff. It is awesome because, like, you read the first chapter of a book that you really don't even know that you're going to love it and it will surprise you. <laughs> because I was literally about to return this book to the library, y'all. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm crazy. So, yeah. Uh, today's Tuesday, by the way, <laughs> Tuesday night, and yeah, all the things. So, I just had to come up here and give an update because I, my mind, like, this is fast-paced right now, loving where we're at with the story, loving the faith content in this, loving our characters so much better than that first book I read. It's just wild how you can be so connected to one book in a series versus another. I can't wait to read the next one, so anyway. I'm going to keep walking, but that's it for the update. Hey, y'all. <laughs> so, I didn't finish the book last night, but I did this morning. And this is the book, okay? We're driving into work this morning. But uh, right here, Castle of Refuge, Melody Dickerson. I just love this book so much, y'all. Like, it's not perfect. It's definitely YA. But in my mind, I loved it because it had good faith content. It had just broken characters and just a really cute romance you know love this medieval kind of time period we're in you know with the castles and you know all the different things so ending there's something about the ending that like with the sister because the sister okay 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 back it up here because y'all said i was like why does she not like her sister okay what you know right off that like when she was younger maris when she was younger she had some issues with this woman who tried to take care of her and there was all this trauma she went through okay and that's part of that is part of why she is the way she is but again those are not real reasons she completely blames her sister for crazy things that are not even her fault you know like like for example their mother died in childbirth it's in the beginning of the story honey you, she blaming her for the mama dying. Look, you, that, that kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? That's not her fault, you know? And it's all these things. So it's like Maris is just over the top. And I kind of would have liked just a little bit more of, like, closure for her, I guess. Like, I don't know. I wanted to see a change in her, you know? And that that's probably it, you know? I want to see more of a change, you know? Like... But I get, like, there's this hopefulness that she will get better because she has mental problems, you know, and from from what everything, she's got, went through this trauma, she has mental issues, and they're hoping that, you know, at some point she can get better, but it's just there's all this stuff that she did, and it was like, there is, <laughs> girl, it's not good, so... 
like, you, she's just a true villain in the story. You know what I'm saying? And I think Melanie Dickerson knows how to write a good villain. Maybe that's why in the first book I just wasn't used to it because I hated the villain <laughs> so bad. And I was like, I can't. But I think that's the whole point of these books is like, I'd like to reread the first book to see how I feel. Because I read that in 2021 when I first got into Christian fiction. And I think now I probably would appreciate it more, you know, than back then. I bet I'd probably give it more of a higher rating. I guarantee you now that I've read the second book, kind of understood her writing style a little more, you know. It's just, it's hard on that first impression when you try a new author of exactly what you're going to feel. And now that I really like the second book, I, I'm, I'm here, you know. And I really did like the sister and all the brothers in the first book, you know, because like we, we followed on with a brother from the first book. And like I said, I do think you need to read the first book because the second book does spoil some things. And I think that you should. It definitely spoils the ending of book one. You should read Court of Swans first, okay? Okay, what's happening? <laughs> I better hold on. I'm gonna grab my phone because it's gonna fall here when I pull out of here. Okay, I'll be back. Yeah, I really, like I said, I really like the book. I probably rate it 4.5, rounding it up to 5 on Goodreads because I just had such a good time reading this and I'm so glad that I did. Because let me just say, this try chapter stuff, you just don't know. <laughs> Let's go surprise. Yeah, I was literally about to return it, like I'm saying. So, um, lots of action, you know, like people getting kidnapped left and right, and like. You know survival here a little bit you know and just the romance was sweet i love that like we had a cute romance not over the top and it's like the regency vibes royalty vibes i don't know what you call it i don't know i just i really liked it so anyway i don't have a whole lot else to say other than um it's wednesday morning and i hope y'all are having a good day i'll probably put this out here tomorrow thursday if i can get it done I have most of the video edited anyway. It's like my last clip. But, uh, yeah. And then for the rest of the month, I don't know. As far as reading, like, I just don't know. Um, I might pick up. definitely want to read Honest June book two. That's a middle grade. I need to look at my library and see kind of the audiobooks. There is a new uh, middle grade uh, fantasy book that's come out. Uh, and the, the name of it's Losing Me. I'll put the cover right here for y'all. Um, I can't remember nothing, y'all. I'm just, my memory's shot. But I am going to be listening to this book right here. Love the cover. But he reached out to honestly read and review it. And it sounds really cool. So, audiobook's really short. So, he sent me an audiobook to honestly read and review. So, I'm going to listen to that. You know, if it's an audiobook, I can definitely get through it. You know, like, I have kind of cut back on reviewing. But I felt like with this being an audiobook, it was fine. You know, like, I had time for it. Um, I've still got some NetGalley books i got to read next month. I'll pick some of those back up. Uh, and I need to catch up on a few NetGalley books. I need to read, like, some, like, because I've got two or three books that are in a series that I need to read the, the books before that. So, I'll, at some point, I'll, I'll try to do that. We'll see. Uh, sorry, these angles. <laughs> this is not really good, does it? <laughs> I'm not looking at myself. I'm like, it's a rainy day. But um, that's pretty much it for this video. I, I'm just looping at this point. I'm rambling. But I hope y'all had a good week, or having a good week, actually, whenever you're watching this, and a good day, and all the things. Maybe we're finally out of winter over here in the Tennessee. Uh, it's been cold, and we don't even know what we're doing. <laughs> it's supposed to be first day of spring. What? Yeah, right. <laughs> we won't be seeing spring no next month. But before, I, before I end this video, I do have three tag videos I filmed, and they're, like, all in the same shirt. So, <laughs> you'll be seeing some more videos um, in the next couple weeks than usual. Because I did manage to get some filmed when I was on vacation. So that was nice. Because I've like really, like I said, I hadn't really had anything to film. And I'm glad that I did this video because, you know, I really needed an idea. Have, oh, update. I am going to start the uh, Daily Grace Company. Uh, I, I keep wanting to say devotional. It's a Bible study. Uh, and it looks like from most of the comments, y'all said preaching the gospel to yourself. But there were several others that y'all had mentioned too that I'll definitely get to. And, but I think I'll film be working through that a little bit and see how it goes. Some of the Daily Grace Company studies are all, almost too question heavy sometimes for me. Uh, I'd rather just like be doing more study focus versus like asking me all these questions. Which it's nice to like reflect, right? But sometimes it's like, well this is the same answer to this question I just answered. You know what I'm saying? Like I just answered this. It's the same thing. So it's fine. I like them. But sometimes that's why I think I end up quitting them. 
because halfway through, I'm like, I've already answered all this. You know, it's very similar to what we just said in the first one. So, um, yeah. So, either way, I'm going to try to do that because it's very short. So, that's probably something I do. Maybe in April, I need to catch up on my Bible reading, transparency. Um, been about a week since I've been in my Bible. So, I need to get back in it. And, you know, I was caught up in the March in my um, daily readings. But, when I went on vacay, I didn't take it with me. didn't read the Bible. So, um that's just transparency you know there you're gonna have some days like that some weeks like that but we're getting back at it so you gotta refocus and yeah so probably on my lunch today I'll do that and uh, get caught, try to get caught up a little bit on my Bible reading on my lunch break and all of that so yeah I'm almost to work but I will let y'all go I hope y'all have the best day I love y'all hope you enjoyed this video let me know down below if you've read Melody Dickerson if this book sounded interesting I hope it made sense and I even said like what this was you know what i'm saying like did i make sense i hope so but if not i'll link the book below <laughs> how about that so uh this was a lot of fun and uh, i'm so glad that i did it and it let me read a book that was also kind of out of my comfort zone and just really enjoyed it so i hope y'all have a good day i love y'all and i thank you all for watching and i'll see you all in my next video bye y'all